Something big coming up on your screen Just settle back and relax Cause you're gonna get A whole lot of singing A whole lot of laughing A whole lot of loving from me like a baby last night. I woke up this morning with a bottle in my mouth. <laughs> and this has been a beautiful week. The police commissioner of Beverly Hills, Beverly, there's an L in there, Beverly Hills did a real nice thing. He put up a new traffic sign in my honor. Crawl and don't crawl. <laughs> Of NBC is a real thoughtful guy. For Valentine's Day, he sent me candy. Not the chocolate, the actual girl from the movie. <laughs> and I appreciate it. I may be married, but I'm not a fanatic about it. <laughs> oh, of course, I'm kidding. You know... <laughs> means when you come home when there's someone there to meet you with a hug and a kiss and a kind word, it means you're in the wrong house. <laughs> you know something? Of course you know something or you wouldn't be here, buddy. You all idiots. You gotta know something. My genie and me, well, we're married 19 years and we never took a honeymoon and we're finally going to take one. She's going in July, and I'm going in August. Need <laughs> some happiness on me, so the brighter side you'll see. No more loneliness to be. At least some happiness on me. Tell me. And I'll be greater Build me up and I'll fly Love me now and I'll be glad later And your travels goodbye Lay some happiness on me So the brighter side you'll see No more loneliness to be Lay some happiness Yeah.
Oh, thank you. This kid's got a voice. If Ronald Reagan had his tonsils, even college students would listen to him. <laughs> hey, you're a wild audience, and we got a special gift for all of you. A bar of special heavy-duty soap. <laughs> no, for you people who are having trouble removing Hubert Humphrey bumper stickers from your cars. <laughs> I ain't gonna say that again. <laughs> fifty girls, count them fifty. Fifty, count them fifty glorious girls. Fifty girls, ain't that nifty? Every shape, every size, what a sight for sore eyes. Fifty treats, fifty. Fifty treasures, fifty peachy perfect pepperu pearls, strung out in one long luscious line. Not forty-eight, not forty-nine, but fifty. Got them, fifty glorious girls. Fifty girls. Wow. I'm so very proud of them. Fifty, count them, fifty glorious girls. What a lovely crowd of them. Fifty girls. Yeah. Ain't that nifty? Everyone a jam. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So many do and do the Fifty treats. I know. Fifty treats. Ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 46, 47, 48, 50, count them, 50 glamorous, 50, count them, 50 glitter and 50, count them, 50 glorious. <laughs> so, 49 and a half. 50 girls, count them, 50. Fifty count of fifty glorious girls. Fifty girls, ain't that nifty? Every shape, every size, what a sight for sore eyes. Fifty treats, fifty treasures. Fifty peachy, perfect, triple pearls. Listen, friend, what I did you Count the legs, divide by two season and NBC was real nice to me this year. They tore up my old contract. Now I'm the only guy in the business with a torn contract. <laughs> they also had a decorator come in and he redid my dressing room to fit my image. It's real lush. <laughs> They put in a beautiful shag rug. It's made out of two hippies. <laughs> wow, only kidding, hippies, only kidding. Don't jump my car. Yeah, this... This should be a great television station. Doris Day is going to be a lot sexier this year. She got silicone injections in her freckles. <laughs> and ABC's got a new show called The Young Lawyers. One for each mother's brother. <laughs> and Love American Style, Love American Style, Love American Style is coming back. That's Zsa, Zsa Gabor and anybody. <laughs> and NBC's going to have a lot of new children's programs this year. The Peacock Stop Taking the Pill. <laughs> Wednesday night, and on Wednesday.
Wednesday nights, NBC's going to have a new show on called The Psychiatrist. He's going to try to explain how the rest of the show's got on. <laughs> and my good friend Orson Welles is with us. Wells. There's an S on in there. Well, you know, he paid for the full name. And, uh, <laughs> and here's Orson now to show you just what happens when puppy love gets carried too far. never been pregnant before. <laughs> it's my own fault. I should never let her take that course in sex education obedience school. <laughs> Believe me, it's better than having your dog pick it up on the streets. <laughs> uh, come on, relax and sit down. Okay. How long has your dog been married? Huh? What? How long has your dog been married? Clarissa? Yeah. Well, I, the reason I hesitate is because I'd rather not talk about it. Uh, the old story, another dog in trouble. Please, I, I'm so ashamed. I don't know how it happened. She's not even allowed on the couch. Besides, she was always such a good girl. Yeah. Yes, they're all good girls. Let them out of your sight for two seconds, they fall for the first cold nose that comes along. <laughs> what about the father? Will the dog stand by her? I doubt it. He he didn't look too reliable. <laughs> I should have known he was no good. Any dog can do this with his paw. <laughs> I don't know. He probably invited her to dinner and slipped something into her kibble. <laughs> This cute little nose and this cute little tail. Well, it's obvious it wasn't her nose he was interested in. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh. She just gave birth to a bouncing baby boy. Shall I bring the puppy in? I, I, I don't want to see the baby. In fact, I don't even think I can forgive Clarissa here. Oh, no, no, that's... That's hardly a charitable attitude. Why don't you at least reconsider and look at the puppy? I'm sure once you've seen him, you'll forgive Clarissa. Well, okay. Nurse, would you bring in the puppy? <laughs> that is Clarissa's baby. You're right, I forgive her. She's suffered enough. It makes us feel so nice and warm when deeds My voice is so sexy, every time I sing all alone by the telephone, I get an obscene call. <laughs> I fell in love with you, first time I looked into them that I You got a certain cute way of flirting with them that I 
make me feel so happy They make me blue <laughs> Girl Now we're starting I'm falling I'm in a way for great big you My heart is jumping You sure started something with me about the second year of the variety show we were a top 10 show and remained that way for what eight nine years whatever we were on for 10 and there wasn't a performer a star nowhere anywhere in the industry that didn't do the show or wanted to do the show they were all easy to pick up the phone call their agent and they were there very, very few people ever said, well, no, my hair hurts or something, I can't go on, I'm doing another movie. Most everybody. I mean, if you can get John Wayne and Jimmy Stewart, you know, and Bing Crosby and Sinatra, and by with, with a telephone call, give me a break. The whole world will come and do the show. No, no, th this isn't Henry. Y yes, this is the booth at the corner of Wilshire and Beverly, but I, I'm the only one here. I don't, I don't, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, uh, ju just a second, man. Hey, fella. What? Uh, are you Henry? No, my name is not Henry. <laughs> uh, he, uh... He doesn't seem to be here, ma'am. 
Uh-huh. I... Uh, oh, I see. Uh, you're his wife, and you were supposed to meet him here. Well, look... Hey, uh, hey buddy. I, hey, uh, buddy. Uh, Henry's calling on the next phone here. Oh, oh, oh that's good. I'm, I'm speaking to his wife, Martha. Oh, well... Well, uh, Henry, Henry says to tell Martha, this is Henry, just tell Martha that he's, he's held up at the office and he'll be half an hour late. Ah, uh, but Martha, uh, Henry's on the next phone and he says he'll be an hour late. I, and, uh, uh, oh, uh, I... Uh, uh, w would you please give Henry this message from Martha? Don't bother to show up at all. I'm going home to mother. Uh, oh, well, Henry says, but uh, a Tweety doll... Because you don't love me anymore. Oh, good. No, he said, of course I love you. You're, you're my little poopsie pie. <laughs> well, then, how's it come you never buy me flowers? How's it come you never treat me romantic like you used to? <laughs> me not romantic? Who's the one that always has a headache, whose face is always covered with cold cream and, and hair curlers? You see, you don't love me, you just love my body. <laughs> Well, listen, with all that cold cream and hair curlers, half the time I can't even find your body. Given you the best years of my life. Well, well stop it, pussy cack. Okay, you know, a uh, cake you said, right? Yeah, pussy cake. You know, I can't stand to see you cry. Isn't there something I can do to prove how I love you? Well, well, Mr. Thompson, just next door. Bought Mrs. Thompson the biggest ruby necklace I ever saw. He did? Well, tomorrow I'm going to buy you a ruby necklace that'll make uh, Mrs. Thompson's ruby necklace look like a heat rash. <laughs> then you do love me. Well, of course I do, Poopsy Tweety Baby. Honey. Well, <laughs> well, uh, well hey. Uh, darn it, I, I can't even remember who I was going to phone. Oh, oh, I just remember. Uh, operator, could, could you get me the fire department? My house is on fire. <laughs>
you get them? I've had hot pants since I was 12 years old. <laughs> Yesterday, the styles were very proper. A plain black suit, a white tie, and a topper. Oh, yeah. But today, today, look what's happening today. Station break announcement time. We, we'd better read it, huh? Yes. You, yes. Card, card person. Here I am, Mr. Martin. Mm, isn't she graceful? Not particularly. <laughs> when she walks, it looks like she's got two kids fighting under a blanket. <laughs> now, why don't you tell the people where the announcement is written, honey? All over my body. <laughs> Poor deformed creature. <laughs> Don't you think she has a terrific figure? Are you kidding? I'd put my body up against hers any time. <laughs> Just as long as you don't put yours up against mine. <laughs> What's your name, honey? June. June. Sure. She sure is busting out all okay. over. Isn't she? <laughs> Where did you bump into her? Well, I'll give you two good guesses. <laughs> now, come on, Maud. Let's read the announcement. All right. We'll, we'll be, be right, right back, back, folks, so... Tell me, June, are you doing well in show business? Oh, very well. Except my agent wants to take 10% off the top. Well, that's the only place you can really afford it. <laughs> we'll be right back, folks, so don't go away. Really, Daisy, take away that sexy bikini, and what have you got? In this state, 20 years. <laughs> I found Dom DeLuise at a little club in New York, and uh, he was performing with his wife, Carol, at the time. And I just came to him and I said, listen, I said... Uh, I'm working in California, and uh, I'm involved with the, the Dean Martin show. Would you like to come out there? And he went, ba 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 yes, yes, yes. 
And that was it. He stopped stuttering and he came to California and he became one of our favorite performers and did the show a lot. I think Dom DeLuise was probably a guest on the Dean Martin show more than any other performer. Dean really liked him. Look at this restaurant. Great atmosphere, wonderful food, delightful music. The only thing that could ruin a place like this for you is to have Dom DeLuise as a waiter who is trying to get rid of a very annoying housefly.
Ladies and gentlemen, the internationally renowned pianist, Mr. Victor Borger. but he once had a lead pencil that leaked. <laughs> what? Just found out. I just found out that my dressing room's wired. I got a hunch. Genie is hired Someone to watch <laughs> You see, you don't go fast when you have a punchline to say no I want to be around To pick up the pieces When Raquel Welch falls apart <laughs> Oh, it's still on? Yeah, we... Well, Ken, I'm going to go to the couch now, but before I go, just remember the famous words of William Randolph Hearst, who once said, You show me a clean newspaper, and I'll show you a parakeet with a serious problem. <laughs> I've been thinking about something, uh, you know, my club is in a little bit of trouble. I, I need a long ball hitter. Uh, how are you on curves? Well, well yeah, I can handle curves, yeah. Well, uh, I think we just made a deal. Yeah? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Now, just hold it, hold it. Just a minute, Pally. Yes? You may get thrown out at home. Oh. Come on, girls. <laughs> he thinks the whole world is an umpire. By the time I get to Phoenix, she'll be rising. She'll 
find a note I left hanging on her door. She'll laugh when she reads the part that says I'm leaving. Cause I've left that gap So many times before By the time I make Albuquerque She'll be She'll probably stop at lunch and give me a call. But she'll just hear that phone keep on ringing. travel. I took her to Spain. She did something with a bullfight no American tourist had ever done before. She threw up on the people in front of her. <laughs> they got this, uh, this travel agency had a packing plant. in a package and they mail you there. Of all the places I saw in Europe, I liked Italy the best. I took a beautiful picture there with my camera. Took a picture of the guy stealing my camera. <laughs> Venice is a beautiful city too, but all the streets are underwater, so I don't shop much over there because it's very hard to swim while you're holding a shopping bag. Wrap it up, folks. This is near the end. <laughs> Funny thing about traveling. Everybody gets so excited. 
<laughs> uh, let me bust. They always want to meet new people. They want to go out and see something different. And who do they see? Gloria Jones from Saginaw, Michigan. Freddie McGee from Delray Beach, Florida. Charlie O'Rourke from Seattle, Washington. Millie LaRue from Council Bluffs, Iowa. And Jaime Lichtenboy from the Bronx. Those escorted tours in Paris leave no one alone a minute alone so I slipped off to see Versailles Palace and right there in back of the throne were Gloria Jones from Saginaw, Michigan Freddie McGee from Delray Beach, Florida Charlie O'Rourke from Seattle, Washington Millie Council Bluffs, Iowa. I need left him by gap from the I stopped. I stopped. I stopped at a spa near West King. Though I thought I might as well have me a cup. I sat by myself in the garden. But there, as I turned and looked up, were Gloria Jones from Saginaw, Michigan, Freddie McGee from Delray Beach, Florida, Charlie O'Rourke from Seattle, Washington, Millie LaRue from Council Bluffs, Iowa. <laughs> favorite television performers, I'd say I'd have to head the list with Bob Newhart, probably followed by Don Rickles. But Newhart was extremely special. Bob was a great monologist. He wrote most of his material. And when he did Dean's show, he didn't come in and do it as a stand-up monologue. What we did was we took established Bob Newhart monologues, broke them down, and adapted them so that Dean could work with Bob Newhart. So the sketches that you see with Dean and Bob Newhart were for the most part Bob's monologues 
adapted by our writing staff to incorporate Dean. And for the most part, once again, Dean is ad-libbing along with Bob Newhart through a lot of it. Tonight, Dean and I would like to salute a group of men who are largely un unsung, who daily risk their lives that others might live. I'm, of course, talking about America's driving instructors. Now, I will play the driving instructor, and I'm waiting in the car for my student, Mrs. Webb. students. <laughs> now, according to our file here, your, uh, your name is, is Mrs. Webb, is that correct? That's correct. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> according to this, you've had one lesson already. Uh, do, you, do you happen to remember the instructor's name on that? Have you? Mr. Adams. 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 <laughs> I'm sorry. Here, let, let me just uh, read ahead a bit. I might oh, okay. familiarize myself with your. Um, how uh, how how fast were uh, were you going when when Mr. Adams jumped from the car? Seventy-five. <laughs> where, 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 where was that now? It's in my driveway. We were backing out. Back in, back in. Did, uh, did Mr. Adams cover uh, st starting the car? He, he, he got that far, did he? Hmm? I, you, you want to you, you want to start the car, and we'll pull out into the into the stream of traffic. Uh, Mrs. Webb, you just just turn on the windshield wipers. You want to, <laughs> want to start the car? <laughs> uh, the, the, the heck with it. Leave the heater on. That that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> go, go ahead. You you only have one left. Mm -hmm. There we are. All right, let, let's pull out into the stream of traffic. Uh, what, what's the first thing we're, we're going to do be, before we pull out into traffic? What, what, what did Mr. Adams do be, before he let you pull out into traffic? You mean besides blessing himself? <laughs> That's what, what I had in mind was checking the rear view mirror. You see, we, we always want to check the rear view. Did you not pull out? <laughs> <laughs> Please don't cry, Mr. Love. I didn't uh, <laughs> didn't mean to shout at you like that. Uh, just, just that there was a cement truck. <laughs> All right, you, your lane is clear now. You, you want to pull on? Hmm? Very, very good. Very. All right, now let's let's get up just a bit more speed and and ease it ease it into second. Ha uh ha! -huh. Just hadn't intended to cover reverse this, this early. <laughs> it's just that the other cars uh, honking made me so nervous. Make, makes you nervous. And, uh, try, try not to pay too, too much attention to their honking. You're doing very well. You, you really are. Hmm? I keep having a funny feeling I'm blocking somebody's lane. <laughs> no, as, as a matter of fact, as, as long as you're here on the safety island, you, you couldn't... Uh, <laughs> Let's, let's practice some turns now. Uh, the important thing is you, you want to remember on turns, try not to make them too sharp. Just kind of make it. <laughs> 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 
that, that was very good. Just, just a little fast. Um, one, one other thing. See, uh, see, this is a one-way street. Uh, <laughs> actually, that may, may have been even partially my fault. You see, but you, uh, you were in the left-hand lane, and and you you were you were signaling left, and uh, I don't know. I just uh, automatically assumed you were going to turn left. <laughs> I say, say to you, fella. <laughs> what did he say? I, I couldn't make out what he said. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, Mr. Webb, you want to get out of the stream of traffic uh, coming at us? <laughs> <laughs> Pull in the alley there, anywhere, anywhere. <laughs> this. This is something that not too many of the schools uh, stress too much. We happen to think it's kind of important. It's called uh, alley driving. <laughs> we might drive around the alleys for the rest of the hour. <laughs> I'll tell you what, there's a practice area not too far away from here. It might not be a bad idea if we went over there. Turn right here. That, that's the way. It, 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 it will build up your confidence. Yeah, turn right here. That, it... Um, Well, now that, that was my fault again, you see. Um, yeah, I, I've been at the corner. <laughs> not, not under this man's lawn, you see. <laughs> so, uh, sorry, sir, you want to back out, uh, Mrs. Webb? Sorry, sir. Sorry. Yeah, he's going for the hose. Back out, Mrs. Webb. <laughs> Miss, uh, Mrs. Webb, we, uh, now we just backed into someone. Uh, do, you, do you recall at all uh, my earlier talking about the rear view mirror? Well, the red light blinded me. <laughs> the red light. The flashing red lights on the car I just hit. <laughs> She, she was she was just telling me about it off stage. As a matter of fact, <laughs> no, I, actually, you're right. I suppose I, I should have had her signal. Uh, see, I, I don't know what the signal is uh, for coming off someone's lawn. That, that was right. <laughs> uh, Miss Webb, I'm going to have to go with the officers uh, uh, to the police station. Uh, well, before you go, I want to be sure to get your name. Well, uh, my, my name is Frank Dexter. Wh wh why do you ask? I want to be sure and ask for you the next time. <laughs> <laughs> and as we pay our last respects to Charles Wilkman, not only the founder and president of the Jogging Association, but always a dear, dear friend. Though he has been taken from us, I think he'll know that we'll carry on the proud jogging traditions that he left behind. Amen.
minutes, five miles in 32 minutes, 16 seconds. That, that's one minute, eight seconds off your old time. You never look better, guys. Dean and Frank knew one another for 20 years, 25 years before, you know, Dean ever went on his own television show. Before Dean ever worked with Jerry, he was a friend of Frank's. Knew Frank, hung up with Frank, played baseball with Frank. Sometimes it was at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. They were great friends. They were, of course, you know, notorious for being the original Rat Pack. It was, what was it, Frank and Dean and Sammy Davis and, and Peter Lawford and, and Joey Bishop. But when you really stop to think about it, the Rat Pack is really the two guys. It's it's Frank and Dean. The other guys were kind of, they filled in. Sammy was wonderful. But it was really the, the, the two guys that made it work. And they felt so comfortable together. Beauty says both. 
that love's a barrel of dynamite. Where did you get the stuff? Hooray and hallelujah. Yeah, well, that kid's tradition has come yeah, on this show. Coming, coming through you. Goody, goody for her. Goody, goody for me. And I hope you're satisfied, you rascal, you. When you see a guy reach for stars in the sky, you can bet that he's doing it for some dog. When you spot a John wait out in the rain, chances are he's insane, as only a John can be for the chain. When you see a gem paying all kinds of rent for a flat that would flatten the Taj Mahal.